A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Israel is a luxuriant vine whose fruit matches its growth. The more abundant his fruit, the more altars he built. The more productive his land, the more sacred pillars he set up. Their heart is false. Now they pay for their guilt. God shall break down their altars and destroy their sacred pillars. If they would say, we have no king, since they do not fear the Lord, what can the king do for them? The king of Samaria shall disappear like foam upon the waters. The high places of Avin shall be destroyed. The sin of Israel, thorns and thistles, shall overgrow their altars. Then they shall cry out to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall upon us. Sow for yourselves justice, reap the fruit of piety, break up for yourselves a new field, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain down justice upon you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek always the face of the Lord. Seek always the face of the Lord. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Glory in his holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Seek always the face of the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents, and the judgments he has uttered. Seek always the face of the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Seek always the face of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The name of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. James the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these twelves after instructing them thus, do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, As you go, make this proclamation, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. So today we're going to focus on the psalm today. We don't focus on the psalm too often, but... Uh, there's an important, uh, an important spiritual principle that is present in our response today. Seek always 
the face of God. Seek always the face of God. And that comes to us from Psalm 105 here. As, as it opens, it makes an invitation to us, an appeal, as, as it often does, to sing to God, sing praises to Him, tell of His wonderful works, make known His deeds among the people. The first thing I think it's important for us to dwell on is, is the power of song in the life of the Christian. And not just any random song, but the power of song and music to proclaim the deeds of God, to proclaim who God is, to proclaim what God has done, what God is doing. I remember years ago in my uh, early ministry days uh, when I was doing a lot of praise and worship, had a band, traveling around, doing all the stuff, and, and just getting tired of so many of the songs that were out at the time. And, and I remember going to all my friends who are also worship leaders and saying, um, do you have any songs about Jesus? <laughs> do you have any songs about who God is and what God has done? Because there was a lot of introspection, a lot of my need for God, a lot of my falling short. And, and to be sure, the Psalms are filled with a lot of that as well. But we should always start with proclaiming who God is what God has done. That is, our, that is our launch pad for our reflection on now what we are asking God to do in us. So but this leads us to our refrain today, our response. Always seek the face of God. It says here, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. There's verse 4 here in Psalm 105. Seek his face continually. So this is a phrase that will come up from time to time throughout Scripture. And this notion of seeking the face of God is saying we are seeking the presence of God, an encounter with God. Because when you think about uh, encountering a person and seeing their face, their face reveals a lot, right? Their joy, their anger, their dissatisfaction, their confusion. Uh, you see somebody that should know you, but they don't, and they don't have that familiar, oh, so good to see you. The face reveals so much, which is one of the challenges in our mask-laden season that we have. All our faces are, are covered, and we're, we're not used to that as human persons. We are ordered towards knowing the other through the encounter with the face. And when we seek the face of God, what we are saying is we are seeking the presence of God and encounter with God to know God. It's very personal. It's a theme that you don't see in Islam. It's a theme you don't see in Buddhism, in Hinduism. This idea of personally encountering the face of God the presence of God, coming into that personal encounter where he sees you, you see him, and it's in that moment that you begin to truly know God. Now, without getting into the Hebrew here, the first time this word about seek the face of God, the first time it is used in application to God is back in Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. Or Genesis chapter 3. We've got the fall of Adam and Eve. Verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. It's the same Hebrew word that gets translated, presence or face. The first thing, primary thing, that keeps us out of relationship with God, knowing him personally, that encounter is our sin. And that first consequence for them, they knew they couldn't be in the presence of God. They didn't want to, you could say, look in his face 
to see the displeasure, to see the discomfort. They knew they were now out of relationship or this act had caused them to not want to be in relationship. So the psalmist today is inviting us to seek the presence of God, seek the face of God, this personal encounter with God where he uniquely knows us. Yes, even our sins, even our weaknesses, which is why the sacrament of confession is so powerful. One of the things I, I tell people in confession from time to time is in Revelation, it says that Satan is the, the accuser of the brethren. He stands before the throne accusing us day and night. Drake, he's not good enough. Uh, he's not worth it. He won't be faithful enough. And when we go to confession, and we go and we bear our soul before the Lord, and we proclaim the areas where we've fallen short, we beat Satan to the punch. So when he gets to the throne, he says, do you know what Drake did? Father's like, yeah, I do, by the way. <laughs> he just told me. Like, Wait a minute. How, how do you do that? Well, he went to confession. Uh, and we, we take that power of anonymity that Satan thinks he had by keeping us alone and isolated. When we get alone and isolated in our sin, thinking nobody else is struggling with these things, this is what keeps us out of relationship, away from the presence of God, away from the presence of community and not encountering the face of God. Uh, I encourage you today, maybe later, to go read Psalm 24 and Psalm 27 that also speak about seeking the face of God, the presence of God. Um, those, those three Psalms, 24, 27, and then today Psalm 105, have this theme in them. And Psalm 27 in particular, it's very well known. If you read it, you'll see it very familiar. Uh, but it would be a good spiritual reflection for us today as uh, we live in a world that is desperately in need for an encounter with the living God, uh, which means we need to be having that encounter first so as to draw people to that same place. Let us seek the face, seek the presence of God today. Amen? Amen. Amen.